Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the Bootlegs. Yo, mate, uh, you're not going to say Konnichiwa without shirt on. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Or, well, Konnichiwa on, on the other hand, and which, welcome. Which, which shirt? Are you wearing shirts? I'm not actually, no, I'm not wearing a shirt today. I decided to okay. go shirtless for today's podcast. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, <laughs> that was absolutely rubbish. <laughs> How are you doing, my man? <laughs> doing pretty good. How are you? I'm 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 great. This is basically uh the day I have been waiting for the entire year. Uh because today we are gonna we're gonna talk about something very dear to me. We're gonna talk about the best and worst looking boots of 2019, completely disregarding uh topics like uh, performance and fit and everything else. We're purely gonna take a look at the looks, the visuals, how pleasing are they? Did they rub us the wrong way? Uh, that's all going to be very good. It's also going to be, we're going to talk for a while, I guess, like we usually do, meaning that we've uh, taken the, the Q&A section from this episode and we've moved it to the next episode, which is going to be in 2020, because we're going to go on a short uh, Christmas break after this. So if you have any questions you'd like us to answer, in the next episode next year. Well, you should let us know in the comment section right down below. And before we get started, if you already know, you're going to have a blast in this podcast. Hit the thumbs up like button so we know that um, we're at least doing something right, <laughs> I guess. So so the deal is here, Josh, today, we've made some lists, right? Uh, we've, we've, we've spent quite a while making the list. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, mix it up a little, talk about the best boots, uh, mix it up with the worst, see what happens. Yeah, and uh, as always, feel free to share your input on what you think were the best colorways and the worst colorways of 2019. Because, I mean, we thought about this for about an hour, but I'm sure there's <laughs> at least 10 or 20 boots that were really good and or really ugly that we also forgot about. So if you or have maybe, any opinions, maybe you, leave them. Yeah, and maybe you just completely disagree with our lists. I don't expect so because, of course, we are men of very fine taste. <laughs> we are connoisseurs, but, you know, it happens. So, uh, so, so let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, there's definitely going to be some angry people in the comments, I guarantee Oh, you. yeah, definitely. There definitely. always is. But, uh, but let's try and turn them around. Start on a happy note. Uh, what would be the first thing that came to your mind when you thought, okay, best looking boot of 2019? Uh First thing that I thought of was the Level Up Mercurial Superfly 6 Elite. I Right, okay. That That's a boot that has so many different elements to it that I really like. One, it's a white base. I think white boots mm. always look really good. I love yeah, the inclusion love of the Safari print. That's something I don't think we see enough of from Nike. And the fact that it was done so subtle with reflective material. Like if you take a picture of that boot with the flash, it's, it's even that much cooler. Really like that. I think the simplicity of the stripe that just incorporates all of these iconic mercurial colorways over the years, really cool. I know I know people are fans of the What the Mercurial series and that one specific Superfly 4 is what pops into a lot of people's heads. But I, while I think those are cool, it's like a very easy way of just incorporating all these colors and it, it's kind of a goofy looking pair of football boots. This is like that same concept, but done in a much cleaner way. I, I just think it looks really good. I, I totally agree. I mean, it's not it's not that special and mind blowing to me, but it's just a really cool execution and a nice nod back in time to all of the, let's just say, pretty pretty iconic material colorways we've seen um, so far. Basically, a uh, nice little concept, and yeah, it's it, it's very very solid. Um, for me, the first thing that popped into my head was, maybe it's because it's so fresh in my memory, but it, it would be the Mbappe X Bondi Superflies. Because my lord, I mean, just wow. Yeah, uh, we, we. They, they just, you know, they're, they're, I know they're, they're very unique and they're very, uh, you know, special and that could be said in a, in a good and a bad way. Um, they're definitely unique and for me, they just do a lot of things right. I love... I love how the pattern kind of mixes into the silhouette of the boot. It feels very uh, wholesome and, and, you know, it has a side swoosh. The green camouflage pattern just looks really, really good to me. And it's just, you know, there's gold, there's details. It's just a very visually pleasing football boot, uh, at, at least when you're J-Mike. So, uh, so, so yeah, very, very high up my list. Yeah, at least. super unique looking, really, really good attention to detail on that boot. Uh, and, and also, I, I want to say the box. And did you see the string bag with those? Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was quite cool. a string bag. Like I know you have a little bit of a string bag fetish. 
I said it. That was quite uh, a string so, bag. I I think that was if we're naming string bag of the year, I guess we could we could put that in the title, right? String bag of the year. It's that one. No, we're not gonna. <laughs> We're not going to do that now. But what, how would you, I'm, I'm going to let you rate it. How would you rate it? Get, get it over with. Oh, that string bag. Well, I think in my video, I gave it a 10 out of 10.4, but in various okay. languages. Uh, yeah, of course. It's just solid, really solid string bag. Very impressed with it. Definitely. But I'm not definitely. sure that the quality came through in the video. But for, for anybody that's watching this podcast and has the boots, I think they'll understand. Um, it's a very nice string bag. Yeah. But that's enough about being positive. Let's let's be a little bit negative because that's that's kind of for a little, I least. think that's more fun because there were some pretty epic fails in the, the football boot colorway area of the industry this year, I would say. Yes, uh, there were. And I have here written down in my notes simply the word bacon. <laughs> and the, I, funny, the funniest thing is I also have written down the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what it is because I, you think of this and I thought, okay, what is with, with Adidas and, and launch colorways that are just, they, they turn into memes. Because you, remember when the Copa 19 plus came out in 2018 and it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, that was partially my fault, but they, they come out with this nemesis and I'm like, how can I not? How can how can we not make fun of this? It literally Mate, looks Adidas like it's made of strips of bacon. I hate you. I know. It's, it's, Honestly, look, look, the nemesis. I don't think it's a particularly bad looking pair of football boots when you just look at it. But the moment, you know, when you see it, you can't unsee the bacon. It, it seriously looks like bacon strips that's just been turned into a boot. Again, I actually think, you know, it looks quite all right. It's red. It's uh, some, you know, chrome on it. it you know. It works decently, but but it's just the whole bacon thing that just that just <laughs> ruins it for me. It's, it's, it, again, once you see it, you can't. There's no way you can ever unsee that. Uh, another thing that that didn't really didn't really rub me the right way was uh, the launch colorway off the Puma Future 19.1. I don't know if it was the color and the you know the mix of this bright uh, salmony red ish combined with that really light neon like blue that just didn't do do it any favors for me or if it was also the the combination of this very lava lamp like design it gave me some serious like late 80s early 90s vibes but just you know i think you said it earlier that looking back at it, it probably was it wasn't the best i think it's always a mistake to launch and, and the nemesis bacon boot was a similar shade of like pinkish, reddish, orange. Mm, mm. I, I think it's always a mistake to launch a boot in a color that looks different in every single picture, depending on lighting and, and, and all that right. stuff, right? I think right. that's what Nike got right. And I don't necessarily think this is the best colorway of the year, but I think it's a great example of a successful launch colorway in the blue and white mercurials, mm. right? That blue was very, it showed up very accurately in pictures and arguably looked even better in person because of the extra detail that you'd get to see. But and the shine, the shimmery. Yeah, you but you it. can't was, yeah. you can't do these weird like in between shades that end up looking different in every single picture because I think people just they're going to see one picture they really like, but they might see ten pictures that make it look kind of awful. So I don't know. Oh, you know, make it look like food, and you know <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Uh, you know, speaking of Puma, what I think Puma did right with uh, with the whole power up pack that the launch Future nineteen point one was a part of was the one. That was actually really, really cool. The the one nineteen point one in this like blue, red, and black uh, colorway. They just mixed the colors in a better way. I felt, and it it reminded me of something taken straight out of Tron, the Tron movie. Like, like it was just futuristic in a classy way. And and, and you know, I really, really, I, I dig that color. It's You're right. nice. That was a good one. It, it did a good job, I think, of showing off all the different elements of the Puma one because it is right. so many different materials, but it made it look. I think that is as sleek as the Puma One silhouette has ever looked in any generation in any colorway. It just, it had a nice look ah. about it. Okay, sorry. Ah. <laughs> ah. Come on. All right. Come on. But, Which, but I, 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 you know, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked, I really liked that one too. Uh, another one that I thought was really good and definitely unique. Uh, you know what? Let's go for an, an Addy option. And this is one that I know you're not a huge fan of. It's one that recently came out. It's the Messi Nemesis 19.1 in the 2010 F50 Addy Zero Chameleon colorway. I, I don't I don't hate it, to be honest. Really? I, I thought yeah. that was a cool boot. Because that 
I guess for me, that was, I actually had the original F50 Addy Zero in the messy colorway. It was a leather variation uh, back when it first came out. I, and I mean, any boot that I had as a kid that comes out in some variation of that same boot or colorway, I'm typically going to be a big fan of. Uh, I think the big missed opportunity here is that they didn't actually call the color chameleon purple, which makes absolutely no sense to me because that is clearly the inspiration here. I think that there should have been a much harder tie-in to that original boot than what Adidas went for. But uh-huh. the boot as a whole, it could have been better for sure. I, th- I think you pointed it out in the in the episode we talked about previously that the, the stripe should have been white rather than green like the original. But but as a whole, I'm pretty happy with how they look. And I think it's one of the better regular release messy colorways that we've seen in the last little while. I would agree with that, yeah. Because um, c- speaking of that, I wasn't a big fan of uh, the 302 redirect messies, you know, the white, the blue and red one. See, the whole thing with blue and red, uh, you know, sometimes it works, but often it just doesn't. And, and you know, this combination on the 302 redirect messies, it just made him look a little bit cheap for me. And I, I mean, it was just a shame, really. Not, <laughs> not, not the, not, not, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Yeah, not, not to pile on Nemesis, but that... The first oh, couple colorways of this new generation Nemesis, just you got the bacon boots, then you have these pretty unexceptional looking messy Nemesis colorway. And then they put out the polarized pack, if you remember those, which was just <laughs> the Nemesis 19 plus that nobody could really understand. It's like, is it the German flag, but in like off colors? Like what, what exactly is this supposed to be? Uh, plus, yeah. there was a premium on the price tag as well, which nobody really wanted to pay. It, just a very, very unusual looking football. Beat. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I didn't hate it, but I just never think I understood it, if you know what I mean. Um, what, what they did do right, though, was the nemesis from uh, the inner game pack. You know, the nemesis and the X that kind of came out with the input cold pack that wasn't, you know, my personal favorite either, but... The Nemesis and the X, Black Navy Gold. Oh my God. Yeah, Josh. good, good looking. Come boots. on, what a pack. Uh, I know we've been a little hard on Adidas, um, you know, with, with, with some of the Nemesis colorways, but this is a right banger. Yeah. And if I had to make a top five list of some, you know, the best colors, absolute best colors of 2019, I would simply, you know, th- this would be right up there in the top. Fantastic, classy, uh, you know, really smooth, elegant. It pops well. It, I, I flipping love it. And that for me should have been one of the inline colorways and not a hype drop. It, it, you know, it would have. I feel it would have done extremely well. I'm a big, big fan. But maybe it's just maybe it's just me. Yeah. No. Uh, navy blue, I would say, is maybe one of the more underused colors in the football and it's amazing. Boot industry. It looks good with so many things. Well, just, I'm just, all I'm thinking is like how many different teams I've played for and played against that just wore navy blue. It's, it's, I'd say it's one of the more common team colors out there. Right. So, yeah, so be, yeah. yeah, I don't know. More navy blue, please. Which, uh, right. Should we, should we give people more sugar or a bit of salt? Oh, let's, let's go for some sugar. So okay. I have okay. what is another very unique colorway here, this one from Nike, and it is the Dazzle Camo Nike Tiago Legend 8 Elite. Ooh. I know we're not big fans of so the Legend wait, 8. Wait, wait, you are going to say something positive about a Legend 8. Just the colorway, that's it. Just the colorway. I'm enough. not going to, don't, don't, that don't expect anything too positive out of me, Jay. Right, 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 you got you, got you. But <laughs> very cool, a, a, a very strange launch, because we got to see these boots what, three, four before. months before they actually came out? And we kind of thought- and before the actual launch of the Legend 8. Yeah. It, like, it was one of those things like, oh, this is cool. Nike's actually going to put this out. And then the, then the Legend comes out. And it's like, oh, I guess they're, they're not going to release that. And then out of nowhere, it comes out and it sells out. And I think what was so cool about that is not only that it looked really visually inst- interesting, but the concept of the camo was to actually hide the features of the boot. And it did that extremely well, even in person. Yeah. <laughs> until you're holding the boot in your hands and right on top of it, you can't tell exactly, exactly what's going on there. And that's amazing. That's probably, it's it's a better dazzle camo than we saw on the uh, on the Puma Evo Speeds back in the day, uh, if you remember that. And, and, and also very cool that they actually spelled out Tiempo in this like glitch uh, dazzle camo pattern. I, I really, really like that one, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, what I also have that I liked a lot um, 
is uh, it, it's not very it's not very camo, but it's also a little bit stealthy, you know. Uh, so the Mizuno Repula Three from the Samurai Ninja pack, the navy blue and white, and oh my days again that navy. Ah, oh, it it you know for me that colorway captures everything the Mizuno stands for. Uh, it's it's it, it looks almost regal. If you know what I mean, it looks so flipping classic to me. Uh, and 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 I say classic, and I obviously mean classy. Of uh, me, you no know, speak English, of course. But uh, it it just has that. It has that you know toned down darker vibe, but still it's a bit vibrant and and it really makes the silhouette of the boot and the features with uh, with with the whole uh, foam that sits underneath the leather. It really makes it pop in a nice, but not too. It's not too much, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I'm making I, zero sense. I understand, but I, I love it that much that I can't find the words. That's that's. I, I mean, uh, your point is coming across very clearly in that regard. Um, I, I agree with you that it's a very good colorway, but it's not my favorite colorway of the Rebula. For me, oh. I really like the Tokyo Knights one. I think the black with the silver, and then just that little bit of red as an accent, kind of just outlining the out, the the actual sole plate. Yeah. I, nice, when I saw me? that boot in particular, I thought, wow, this is this looks great. I, I was a really big fan of that colorway. And also a little bit of love for me to the launch colorway, the white and blue. That that it it had some some style to yeah. it as well. Shout, you shout and, out to Mizuno for not because I think there were some weird colorways of Rebula one and two. But so yeah. far with Rebula three, I think every colorway they've put out has been pretty uh, spot on. Brazilian dream or whatever. Really, it was called. I like those. I don't think they're bad. Uh, you know that and the and the Neo Two. I think that is one of the colorways that hasn't. You know, it's not really sitting well with me. I understand that people like it, but the whole, you know, yellow and blue and green. It's not. It's not. It's not my thing. It's okay. not my thing. That's fair. But but mostly Mizuno have done really well for colors this year. I'd say. Okay. But uh, to, on, on something that hasn't done well, and now we're speaking of yellow and blue. Uh, Nemesis. Exhibition pack. Exhibit, <laughs> exhibit, again, added as pack names. Exhibit pack, right? Exhibition, what am I on about? Um, we're going to talk about that with another pack that was actually banging cool that, that were, you know, also caused the native English speaker a little bit of trouble. But back to the nemesis here. It was mainly like a very, very bright yellow. And then it had these blue stripes that just, it made it look a little bit cheap for me. If I'm honest, yeah, I mean, very obviously a super bold colorway. I, I, I don't necessarily agree with you that this is terrible. I, could, I, I if you like bright boots, I think you're really gonna like this colorway. There's, there's nothing about it that is like su super offensive to me. But, but yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. If you're not into the whole neon yellow thing, it's, it's definitely a little bit much. And there's not, there's not a whole lot in terms of design happening when they make everything one color because part of the design concept of that nemesis was that kind of zigzag pattern you'd get to see mm. in the upper and when they yeah. made it just solid neon yellow all the way through you don't get to see that and it just ends up having this kind of weird almost chunky looking shape with these very chunky adidas stripes through the middle it's just yeah not not the most aesthetically pleasing it's uh, funny how you're, you're you know you're a really mellow guy and i know you don't get offended easily but if this doesn't offend you and a boot that looks like food does. I mean, who doesn't love bacon? I, I think, you know, I'm not entirely sure yet that I understand your priorities fully, but, but may, you know, it'll come. <laughs> I'm, I'm pro, if we need a pizza theme boot, Adidas. Give us, if you're gonna do a Nemesis 20, I would like it to be oh, pizza mate, it's gonna, it, It'll come, be, you can be very sure of that. That it's, would it's be excellent. Um, yeah. I guess to stop picking on the Nemesis, because it's kind of been, it was a rough year for the Nemesis line as far as colorways go. Uh, what do I have here? Let's, let's go for something from Nike, because they, I think they had a pretty successful year as far as colorways go, but there are a few that kind of stood out looking back. They're like, yeah, it's maybe a little bit questionable. Mm. Mm. And the one that, it, I guess this is a, not a popular opinion, because the boots ultimately did end up selling out pretty much everywhere they were sold, uh, was the CR7 China Mercurial Superfly 7 Elite. Yeah, that was a little bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I I don't think it's a bad looking boot, but it is weird, and it's not necessarily something I would want to wear. Exactly. And I also felt that uh, the New Lights pack, while uh, generally looking decent, I didn't really like uh, the Phantom Vision 
the the vault phantom vision it was just it was just you know the shape of the boot combined with that very solid very bright popping colorway just made it look massive in my opinion you know especially when you combine it when when something relatively dark as a kid it, it's just the whole contrast it just there was just too much boot and you couldn't really see any any shape and and, and features on it uh, not the best for me yeah i'm not i'm not in love with nike kind of going the route of hey this mercurial like the the branding they did on the new mercurial with all of the sayings and all of the all like the excessive nike branding i, I think is kind of cool but i don't love the fact that they're trying to also roll that out on the phantom vision and venom like have the Mercurial look like the Mercurial and give those boots kind of their own identity rather than, I understand it's a colorway pack and to trying to make it consistent across the pack, but I, I, I kind of like it when every boot has more of a distinctive look to it. Uh, but on the bright side, that boot did feature double ACC branding. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of makes up for the, for the slightly, yeah. And you say on the bright side, it was really bright. Sorry, that was a terrible joke, but <laughs> but it makes up for the the the, the terrible of dynamic fit color that isn't a dynamic fit color. So I guess it's actually all right. Uh, now another, and I want to pick on one more Nike boot, and it's not really Nike's fault because because technically no one at Nike signed this off. Um, but but it's potentially one of the least successful colorways I have personally ever seen in my life. Uh, and it's not really the designer's fault either because he was just, you know, trying to mimic something that has previously been designed. Uh, so I, in the end, it's, it's kind of Nike's fault because they designed a boot, someone ripped it off, and then this other weird guy from, I guess, Canada ripped that off. What were you thinking, man? You're, the ID superflies, the Joan was superflies. This is, you know, no, 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 no. You mean these? Yeah. Excellent. This is, I would say this is one of the best colorways of the year, if not the best colorway. Uh, this oh is the, for those that don't know, God. this is the unofficial Joma Champion Max 2 by Nike. Um, Joma unfortunately decided not to make it, so Nike made it for me instead. <laughs> what? I wonder why they didn't make it. I still, every time I look at these, I'm just like, how did this pass? How did they let it happen? Like, Surely by now they would have hired one guy to just make sure that nothing leaves the Nike ID factory. That's like clearly a joke on Nike, but Hey, they, yeah. obviously that guy, maybe he was off that day or something. I, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> Honestly, when, when, when we designed these and obviously when we saw the video and I saw the design, I, I expected them to, you know, I, I expected to not like them, but then I saw them in person or on, on video and I actually liked them less than I thought I would. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was pretty impressive because they, they really combine everything I don't like. So so this very oh. like saturated blue and yellow and it's just, no, no. Okay. I'm sorry, man, but no. <laughs> it's fine. That's, you know what? We're both designers. I, it's it's fine. We're no, we can't always agree, right? But, but but speaking of something, uh, now we, we talk about this absolutely magnificent looking pair of boots. Uh, I, I had to include another brilliant looking Nike pack, uh, which was the Game Over pack, which is obviously and very clearly inspired by, um, but, but by this. So uh, the Puma 1-1 that uh, is a part of the City pack, which is designed by another guy on this podcast. I'm not going to say who. But uh, a guy with immaculate taste that for some reason Nike, I don't know if they decided to copy it, but uh, but it looks a lot like it. It has a, a Chevron-ish uh, design. And to be honest, I think even if it had nothing to do with, and it has nothing to do with a 1-1, let's be honest, uh, it just looks cool. I mean, I like those colors, obviously, duh. But, uh, I, I, you know, it was a cool looking pack and it, it popped in a, in a subtle way for me. Yeah, I really like the, the, the mercurial specifically of that pack yeah, is kind of what we're yeah. referring to. Look, I, I really like that kind of striped design along the side. It gave the boot a very sleek look. Um, I, I guess to be positive again, a positive about a nemesis, actually. I thought, while this is not a boot that I would necessarily love to wear, the concept of it and the final product ended up looking pretty cool. 
Uh, and that was the Spider-Man themed nemesis. Yes. And, and I think part it. of the reason why that boot looks cool is obviously the nemesis is a little bit weird looking. There's no, there's no way around it. It's just got an unusual shape to it, but take the cleats off. And that looks like something Spider-Man could actually wear on his feet with his costume. Like it, which is cool. I, I, I totally agree. And you know, they actually took red and navy and, and combined it and used the color blocking on the nemesis in what I felt was a very cool way. And it actually took took the, the you know slightly unique and, and funny shape of, of the Nemesis 19 Plus and they turned it into something that actually looked really, really cool. Um, and and the, the way it flowed into the socks, uh, especially with the Bayern Munich kit, obviously when um, when Serge Napoli wore it. Also, uh, also Pepe, of course. It, 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 I mean, one of the best looking Nemesis 19 Pluses we've seen. Yeah. After the after the end of game one. I don't, totally agree. That was very, very cool. I think that was a missed opportunity by them as well to not do more with the whole Spider-Man theme. Like we just saw, they just did the Mania thing and I'm sure you saw the Mania theme sneakers that they put out. Oh yeah. I, the they the should Ultra also Boost be ones on are, are okay, but I mean, it still looks like a, a Predator Mania while you're walking around on the street, which I think is a little bit weird. But the boost right. you wear, kind of weird mid-cut, very chunky moon boot looking things. Very strange. I would have liked to have seen some Spider-Man themed and colored sneakers to go along with that nemesis. I think that would have been really cool, but, yeah. but they didn't do it. No. And, and speaking of stuff that didn't work, those boost you wear, Predator ADVs, they did not. It did not work. Uh, have you had a pair all. on your feet yet? Uh, no. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I've held a pair in my hand to decide, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to put them on my feet because it's going to look. And the funny thing was, I don't understand why they didn't do this with uh, the Mania remake because... Because you know that actually had the the feet you wear insole and the like the wavy outsole design that the boost you wear has, and they didn't do it. And now they did it on the Mania because I guess it's split tooling and all. But it's just it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. It just looks it's just like weird. they're weird. They're very weird. Yeah. There's there's no way around it. Uh, speaking of the Mania, I like the Mania remix because it's a Mania and it's red, and I I I think it's it's awesome. What I also want to bring up. Um, Really quickly moving over, I have a lot of time for the Adidas Arcadic Pack. You know, the black one with that oily uh, accent colors we saw in the in the beginning of the year. Um, Copa, especially. Uh, I like the gold, uh, the gold accelerators that was given to Zizu. And I really also enjoyed the Victory Pack from Nike, just to go over that. Mm, and then those. I have a few left in the bank that I want to elaborate on, but I'm going to let you take a few as well. Okay. Uh, let me let me just rattle off a few. I don't want to say that they're just honorable mentions, but they're maybe not worth going into detail. I thought the Fernando Torres Mizuno Morelia Neo 2 was pretty cool. And that's mainly based on the fact that I'm, I'm just a big Fernando Torres fan. And I think it's cool that he got a boot outside. Right. Of I think that's his first ever signature boot, technically. Yeah, even though must, he was such a be. major part of like the Nike T90 series. <laughs> yeah. Then ended up moving to Adidas. It's one of those guys that I think was really undervalued in terms of like how much he, he was. meant for a brand in terms of bringing popularity to their products. Uh, mm. Another honorable mention, kind of a under the radar colorway release because it's a Nike Premier 2 and who really pays attention they did actually two. The, the gold and white ones were sick. Really, you really think? nice. Oh, I thought they were really cool. I like those. because it's, it's It didn't so, sit right with me. It's so much like that OG Ronaldinho Tiempo. I, I, I really like those. Also, the Euro 2012 black and white themed ones. Really yeah, clean cool. colorway as well. Um, yes. And then another one that there's not a lot to talk about here, but the Griezmann Puma Future 4.1, the, no. the neon yellow with the <laughs> smiley face. It's such a simple thing. And like, it almost seems like you could take any neon yellow boot with a Sharpie and just draw the smiley face on. But right. it was so successful that nobody was buying the Puma Future. But for some reason, that boot sold out, being sold at a premium price as well. Obviously, a clear success from Puma. I probably wouldn't put it on my best, boots of 2019 list but it's definitely up there when we talk you know the most um unique and special and you know eye-catching boots because it, it, it was really fun it was really, you know you can't look at it and not you know giggle a little bit at least it's just it's, it's funny I mean, you know i'm laughing just thinking about it <laughs> 
<laughs> so hilarious, man. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, let me go into uh, you know a couple of you know apart from the the Mbappe boots, some of my favorite looking boots of the year. I really want to give a shout out to uh, the Mizuno Morelli Neo Two Beta, both in the black, which is you know it's just it's just sleek in black, but the silver one, the chrome one, is absolutely stunning. It gives me vibes from uh, that chrome white vapor ones, not only because of the shape and the fit, but but the way it looks. It has that a uh, little bit of see-through effect in the midfoot. And, and for me, it, it combines looking classy with looking extremely fast and dangerous and, and out there. And I think that's a perfect balance. That for me is one of the best looking boots of the year. Mm. Uh, I just... I think it's so cool that they took the Neo 2 concept, which I think you look at the Neo 2 and maybe there was a point in time when it first came out and that's a very modern looking football boot. But by today's standards, I think a lot of people would look at the Neo 2 and think, ah, it's an older style of football boot, not not knowing what exactly is happening there. But the, the beta, especially in that silver with the gold accent, it really kind of brings it to 2019 and gives it this very kind of modern, almost futuristic look. And, and the boots feel every bit as good as they look. It's a oh, yeah. really, really impressive product. Absolutely. And we've also talked about this when we handed out the Boot Nerds Awards of 2019. It's, in my opinion, one of the best boots to come out in, in, in 2019 uh, overall. And, and a really good looker. Also, you know, we got Mbappe, we got uh, Morelia Neo 2 Beta, the uh, inner game pack from Adidas, and then finally the Singles Day Vapor. I know it's a simple boot. It's a black, almost like salmon pink and white boot, but my God, was that effective. Mm -hmm. Just, it has that look of, you know, it sounds cheesy, but it looks like a vapor. It looks like a vapor in the sense that it's minimalistic, it pops nicely, it looks aggressive, and you know, it's just very, very clean. And still, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, it's got a bit of jazz to it as well. And I, oh, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, they're nice. I, I think that's a boot that actually looks a lot better in person than it does in pictures. Oh, it looks so good. On feet, man, this looks so good. That I think that out of all the colorways of of the current generation Mercurial, I think why that one looks so good in person is it really shows off the detail and intricacy of that fly knit upper construction. Exactly. You have such a high contrast between that like kind of bright orange and the black uh -huh. with a little bit of kind of white worked in there. It just looks really good. And um, then again, it, it doesn't look, you know, it's still from far away. It looks black. It looks like a black, white and pinkish boot. But when you get up close, you see all the detail, you see the technology and, and that really magnifique. Yeah, that's a, that's a missed opportunity with, with a lot of, like all these knitted football boots. And like, it seems like very rarely the companies actually decide to show off the knitted construction, which to me is like the coolest part of it. Like Nike did, remember with the Superfly 4, they did a couple of indoors and like their multicolor knit. I, I'm still, it still blows my mind that they have not done that on an actual pair of football boots yet. Yeah. Like it just seems, I know they did, there was a Nike ID variant you could get with Superfly and, 6. But the thing is with multicolor knit, especially when the knit is so, the knit structure is so fine these days. Yeah. Sometimes it just ends up looking brown-ish. It can, and, yeah. Yeah. But That's I know, true. but I know what you're saying. Yeah. But okay, Josh. So we've, we've mentioned a lot of colorways, uh, good and bad, but if you have to choose one best looking football boot of 2019, two girls over drinks and go. Oh man. I know. <laughs> I don't like this question. I know. I'm also yeah, looking I just at want to mention, I just want to mention Neymar's uh, Mercurial <sighs> Vapor 13. We forgot that. We yeah. forgot that one. I didn't, I didn't want to forget. That. I loved that one. I thought that yeah. was really, that's his best signature colorway for me. Absolutely. One of the best looking Vapor 13s we've seen so far. Yeah. The, Had checkered, the checkered flag, the color combo. Very cool. Mm. Mm. Um, and then not to miss out on some terrible ones, but uh, I have the Cristiano Superfly 6, the black ones with his name in white and gold written across the side of the boot. Uh, so, uh, wait, what? Which category? I have that in worst. I I thought those were weird. Outrage. <laughs> You're kidding me. I, I just, I, I I made a video on those and there Friendship was like- Friendship 
over. It was, it was one of those, it was a very like splitting opinion type of product where some people loved it. And then other people said, why would I want to wear a pair of football boots with someone else's name just plastered along the side? Wait, wait, wait. You're winding me up, right? This, this I'm, is- I'm not, I'm not. I just, I'm not, I'm not crazy about them. I have to say. Okay. I really like them. I think they're <laughs> really amazing. Like- <laughs> I think they look amazing. That's fine. I also want to say, this is like this is like an unexceptional boot in almost every single possible area. But the TechCraft Phantom Venom, like, talk about a football boot that'll just blend into the crowd and really doesn't mm. stand out in any way at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, just kind of a boring boot, in my opinion, even though I know it's a blackout, but I think we've seen TechCraft stuff from Nike look pretty cool, and that just doesn't get do it for me. And then I also have written down the Messy 15 Years Limited Edition Nemesis 19.1. I think that's a very plasticky, I don't know. It, in person, it looks like it's been laminated. Man, you are rough on the Nemesis today. Uh, I, yeah, the Nemesis has not had a good year. Next year will be your year for the Nemesis, I promise. But you. the thing is, and we're going to come back to the question, and I know you're just like, you're buying time here. I'm dodging but what is it, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, the best, what's the best looking boot of the year, my man? Uh... I see. I, I'm tempted to say level up Mercurial, but I don't want to. I'm tempted to say Dazzle Camo Tiempo because I just think that that's such a such a unique looking football boot. I'm also okay. really tempted to say Neymar Mercurial. I really thought that was that was such a surprise for me. I wasn't expecting. And I'm just just to just to draw out my answer just for another thirty seconds. I thought the Puma King Platinum <laughs> in all black. Ah. A really cool looking football ah. boot. But it's not the Look, best. I I don't like to say this because I'm not I'm not the biggest Neymar fan. Stop as dodging. Knows. Answer the question. I think I think it's the name for me. I think it's the Neymar Mercurial. I like I like the motorsports connection. I like the checkered flag. I like the color combination that they've incorporated there. I I think it's a really good looking boot. That's that's my answer. And I'm not I'm not changing my mind. Right. What do you Damn, got? It's not. It's it's my turn now. Yeah. Um. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place because I really want to say the Mbappe boots and and that would be like, that was my first reaction. Okay, this is the best looking boot of the year. Uh, But I actually think that I'm going to end up saying the Neo 2 Betas in silver. Because, you know, those are boots that are, they look cool now. They're going to look amazing next year and we're going to look back at them in 10 years and think, wow, that is just a standout looking pair of football boots. Uh, that, that would probably be my, yeah, you know, uh, and, and, you know, even the inner game pack, it looks amazing. I don't know, but Neo 2 beta silver, that's going to be the one I choose. And you can shout at me in the comments cause that's totally okay. Cause if you have any that aren't on the list, both, both good and bad, of course, uh, you should let us totally know what your, let's say five best and five worst looking boots of 2019 is in the comment section right down below. That is of course also where you should put your questions that we are going to answer in the next episode of the Boot Nerds podcast, episode 50, which is going to air in 2020. Because Josh, you and I are taking a bit of a nerd hiatus. We're going to go on a Christmas break and the next episode will be coming in early January 20. 20. I'm, I'm, this is where you're supposed to I talk. Di- we, didn't, we didn't pre-plan any of these picks, especially for our best colorway of the year, but I am, it's very interesting that we both pick silver colorways. It's kind of weird, right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. More so silver. Cool. We need more silver. I think those are like some of the silver. only silver boots all year, yeah? Yeah, we need more silver. I like silver. Make it happen. Right. Uh, all yeah, right. I mean, I guess, thank you so much for your support throughout 2019 because- the Boot Nerds podcast was born basically January 2019. Uh, it's going to be basically one full year come episode 50, which is pretty crazy to think. So thank pretty you so wild, much yeah. for all of you guys that have subscribed to the channel, listened to the audio versions available at bootnerds.com. Just thank you so much for your support. I think this has gone way better than both of us could have ever expected. Oh, yeah. And uh, I guess we, we don't really plan on stopping anytime soon, so... Any, not, any words yourself, Jay? I, you know, as well, uh, you know, nothing but a thank you from me as well. It's been, it's been, it's been fantastic, you know, great to have a, you know, 
someone to really bounce off with, you know, uh, talk boots. It's been, you know, it's, it's just a fantastic opportunity. And the fact that you guys are actually out there interacting with us, uh, you know, listening to the podcast, it's, um, it's really humbling uh, that people just want to listen to us week in, week out. Uh, so so thank you from the bottom of my heart and I hope to uh, to live up to the trust you show us uh, in the coming year as uh, as well. So uh, if you want to listen to the Boot Nerds podcast, and this is the important one, in 2020, you have to go and click the now white subscribe logo button in the middle of the screen. You can, of course, also turn on the notification. And if you want to, you know, still watch some boot stuff uh, over Christmas while we are... Uh, on hiatus you can go and check out josh's channel right over there you can see what we're up to at unisport that's still going by clicking the subscribe buttons subscribe buttons as it's called uh right there and uh, you know with that said guys have a very very merry christmas hope you get some nice boots have a happy new year and uh we'll see you all in 2020 and with those words i am jane mike and i approve this message see you around good issue wait that's wrong <laughs>